میرا نام ڈاکٹر عامر رضا ہے اور آئی ایم اے ٹیچر ایٹ دی ڈپارٹمنٹ آف پولیٹیکل سائنس یونیورسٹی آف پشاور دی ریسرچ دیٹ آئی پریزنٹیڈ ہیئر ان دس راستہ فور کانفرنس پرٹینس ٹو دی چیلنجز دیٹ دی ہائر ایجوکیشن ان پاکستان از فیسنگ رائٹ ناؤ آئی ایم ہیئر ٹو تھینک راستہ فائٹ کانفرنس ہم آ رہے ہیں سکھر سے آر ریسرچ واز مینلی فوکسڈ آن ٹرائنگ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ کہ جو پبلک ہیلتھ سیکٹر ورکرز ہیں ڈاکٹرز ہیں نرسز ہیں پیرامیڈیکل اسٹاف ہیں وہ کن کنڈیشن سے گزرتے ہیں جب وہ اپنی پرفارمنس دے رہے ہوتے ہیں اینڈ آئی بلیو دیٹ دس کائنڈ آف اے نیٹ ورکنگ سسٹم دیٹ راستہ اینڈ پائڈ ہیز ڈیولپڈ از ویری اسٹرانگ ان انفورسنگ اور انکریجنگ ریسرچ پیپل ٹو ورک ٹوگیدر اینڈ گین First session is on education and healthcare. So I would like to invite uh, our three uh, presenters, three Rasta fellows. First of all is Kazi Afa Gemasa for Institute of Business Management, Karachi. Next presenter is Meer Muhammad Shah uh, from Sector IBA University. And the third presenter is Amir Raza from University of Pichawar. The discussant of uh, this session is uh, Rafiul Thakar, who is member of social sector to planning development and special initiatives available all uh, this is uh, azia faq ms sahab from is uh, institute of business management karachi ji faq sahab aaje auz billahi minash shaitani rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim dr nadim ul haq sahab ifanullah kakar sahab rafiullah kakar sahab distinguished uh, iac members and researchers and the participants assalamu alaikum First of all, I would like to, as a professional, as a researcher in academics, I would like to acknowledge the Vasta initiative. Indeed, this is the initiative that triggers the researchers' minds towards creative thinking and solving unsolved problems. That is guiding the meaningful research, which has some impact on the society and can contribute. So, secondly, it was my first experience of working with PIDE and truly and sincerely, I appreciate the professional team that really supported uh, us as a researcher and in the research process that includes our mentors who are available for guidance. Now, the, uh, our project is on pharmaceutical. So, pharmaceutical industry has been consistently forming well since decades. I recall in 90s and 20s, uh, the, the industry was led by multinational companies. Top five companies were multinationals. But, alhamdulillah, they, out of top performing five companies, at least three are national players. And indeed, the quality of medicine they are producing is of high standards. Indeed, our plants are just and good. Indeed, we have professionals who can really make impact. However, what is the problem? We not get our contribution in export and image. Problem is over dependence of APIs. These are pharmaceutical ingredients. This is the ingredient that remedy. As star binders and other things. So Pakistan's dependence is up to 85% on imported raw materials. That creates a, one side creates a supply chain risk and other side it impacts on the affordability, prices, and availability of the medicine. So this study is focused to how we can develop this API industry in Pakistan. I would like to give you a, a brief about global landscape of uh, pharma and API industry. If you look at the pharma market is $1.5 trillion market. If we look at the market, 
it's two hundred and two two one six billion US market. Uh, and currently, uh, if we look at the 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 for where the production of the APIs too far. Physical ingredients. Uh, US uh, is the leading the market uh, section by forty one percent in terms of value. If we look at the volume, then China is leading the uh, global manufacturing, fifty four percent followed by India. Uh, now, if you look at the regional players, India. Perform exceptionally well. Percent of global demand for generic is met by India. They are they are well, API market size is eleven zero nine billion in twenty twenty four. They have six sixty five plants. So this is the knowledge. This is the facts which make the India one of the Leading supplier of AP. Now we look at the Bangladesh. That is relevant. Bangladesh in 2016 was dependent. 97 percent APIs in Bangladesh was imported in 2016. By 2022, now uh, they are importing 30 percent of their APIs, and they are project. They are planning. One point four billion APIs. So Bangladesh is a regional country, similar like us, and they really transformed from dependent API dependent, export dependent country to an exporting country. So if you look at the US and UA uh, EU, because of the cost, they Outsource these uh, manufacturing facilities in Asian countries. Now they are planning to reshow these uh, and manufacturing in Europe and US because of the supply chain risk, because of the the uh, the, the supply chain disruption they face during COVID. So this is the importance uh, of APIs. If we look at Pakistan. So Pakistan produces uh, 15 percent of the API demand, and we only produce 16 APIs here. And we have only uh, we have issued 23 licenses, out of which only seven API manufacturing licenses are operational. This is where Pakistan stands now. Uh, we make uh, in-depth study, and we uh, Pakistan pharma market seven forty eight now is become eight twenty eight billion market, uh, and uh, what we did actually we got the data from the AMS that is source, and we analyzed using AI tools based on APIs uh, sold in Pakistan, so. If we look at the out of 500, more than 500 APIs being used in the in Pakistan, the top 100 molecules contributes 62 percent of the market with a 17 percent rate. Uh, if we look at the individual APIs, so the paracetamol is the, is the most selling API in Pakistan. And followed by cefetazone, that is an antibiotic, broad spectrum antibiotic. So these are the two most selling APIs in Pakistan. And we have in this study we have the details about this dash. We have these interactive dashboards to provide the uh, detail about this. Now coming to the imports. So import data, we we got the import data from twenty fourteen. Three and analyze the the data using the percent uh, interact. So you look at the last nine years, we imported seventeen thirty five million dollars APIs in Pakistan. The main supplier of the API sixty one percent is China. 
In India, that is 28%. And we have in this study, we have the details about each API. Now, if you look at the figures in 2022, import of APIs in 2022, the China, China is, uh, has been supplying 68% of the APIs, followed by India, 23%. And here you can also see uh, top class of uh, APIs. That's being the top most uh, top importer, followed by the other companies. Again, loxazine and derivative, that is antibiotic, is the most imported API in Pakistan. If we look at here, the 330 million API market, uh, sorry, 33, 330 million imports in 2022. Okay, again, the main supplier is China with 68%, and we have all the details in the dashboard and in the study. This is important. What are the reflection of the analyzing the import data of APIs? If you look at here, out of 330 million API market uh, imports, 120 million APIs are those APIs Pakistan already has the capacity to produce. And I have listed the APIs which are being manufactured in Pakistan, but still we are importing. It means if we just think about of uh, encouraging the local pharmaceutical companies for substitution on both 125 to 125 million may be possible. Again, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, is 68 percent, and in Ch and again the problem with the Chinese API is they have these serious quality issues. And when we import and export the products and others, so there are the issues. But China, India is relatively better than China in terms of quality. However, again, jab halat yahan khab hoye, border issues hoye. So we have a shortage of essential medicines because the raw material was coming from India. So again, this is a supply chain risk for the country. Achha, the important thing is if you look at finding three, three th th 30 million imports, mein, six companies are the major players who are importing these guys. So look at and see and engage them, then obviously. Can work on uh, the import substitution. Then, in the other chapter, we what we did, we studied the current API manufacturing company or companies operating in Pakistan. Right? So we have tried to compile a list that is twenty one. So when we look at the, uh, the data, twenty three licenses issued by the draft. Manufacture APIs. However, only seven companies are operational. What about others? What do those licenses are doing? How these licensing are used correctly are not misappropriation. I don't know, but this is an area which we have to see when we have issued. Secondly, five licenses are issued for a basic manufacturing. Basic means you are starting with the key starting raw material. But currently, seven companies are operational and they are just processing intermediates. They import the intermediates with N1, N2, N3, finish it and market it. So it means, again, the, the basic manufacturing is key. And this is the area where we have to uh, focus. Uh, they have issued uh, 16, uh, 117 license for semi basic manufacturing, but uh, hardly 30 APIs are being produced. Now, this is why we have 125 APIs, million dollars, APIs which we have the capacity and we are producing. Why the local pharmaceutical companies are not? 
sourcing this from the local suppliers. We have investigated this through the literature as well as through the interviews and very detailed process. So the three are the main issues. When we talk to the pharmaceuticals, they don't have the confidence on the quality of the API being produced locally. Cost competitiveness, sometimes you import karte hai, or locally we have to see rate per mill ray. So, there is an issue. This is a capacity. One thing is to understand that a pharmaceutical company, a raw material, is a API. So, there needs six months. You cannot shift. I have a company, I have a base. I need six months for validation studies. So the good manufacturers, pharma manufacturers, they are not confident that they can consistently give their company or not. Or they will not have variations in quality. Because they need a drug master file. So we are not push APIs in the rest of them. These are the issues which are certification, compliance issues. The other new company in Pakistan is FDA approved. We have very, we don't have the uh, international accreditation. So, just you have international accreditation, nahi hoga, approval, nahi hongi, you are European and markets are not open for you. We are exporting 200 million, but we have the potential up to 1 billion. But, however, we have to see any issues. So, kisna karne. now we have. Uh, we did uh, in, this, in this study, first we de- did the literature professional reports review. Uh, what are the challenges? So challenges just may highlight where who are regulatory hurdles in India or China pay over dependence a shortage of bioequivalence labs. If bioequivalence labs ki jo production hoti hai, also hoti hai, helps you get the uh, and to qualify for because the international market may have data, which looks up because in the reports now, there are issues. Approvals, Jab, app ke saad jab aap interact karte, so industry may give mindset, a perception, a they treat them as the masters. So, industry go support chaye, they. Production पे जाने के लिए ये सारी चीजें lack करती हैं antagonistic environment है और we don't have national policy on APIs so this is a such an important issue दूसरी तरफ जब हमने uh, we interviewed the, the CEOs of the APIs manufacturing companies pharmaceutical companies people from DRAP uh, scientists and others so the themes and did the qualitative qualitative analysis so जो themes आए जिसमें ये which is the issue, API import substitution. They say import substitution is possible. However, quality and capacity are the issues. When they say API, pharmaceutical API production scale up. Now we have made APIs, small plants. Your demand is also small. So when we do this scale up, then the cost will be reduced. And then Locally, we compete in the international market. So, compete production is scale up. In the case of quality, compliance, and international accreditation, we have to say Bangladesh export. So, when we have export, we have to export. What is the key success factor? Key success factor is FDA approval, international accreditations. We need documents with drug master file which comply with the international scope requirement. So, other countries may they can they don't compromise on this. So, ye jo FDA approvals nahi hai hamare paas. Isliye hume market ex- regulatory framework uh, ki zarurat hai. We have the policy on API, magar implementation is very poor. Dusra ecosystem, again, API pass nahi hai. Agar aap API, uh, all dusre issues hai, support infrastructure nahi hai. We have the API policy made in 2022. But 
अगेन उसमें सारी चीजें प्रॉमिस हुई एपीआई पार्क बनाएंगे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बनाएंगे बट वो उस पर अमल नहीं हुआ आर एन डी देखिए जो एपीआई है उसकी जो बैकबोन है वो रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट है अब एक केमिकल लेते हैं उसको प्रोसेस करते हैं रिएक्टर्स में रिएक्शन होते हैं उसके बाय प्रोडक्ट बनते हैं उसको फिल्टर करते हैं तो इस तरह रिसर्च आर एन डी तो पाकिस्तान में बेसिक आर एन डी स्ट्रक्चर मौजूद है हमारे एच सी जी रिसर्च सेंटर्स हैं और दूसरे हैं लेकिन सपोर्ट दिस आर एन डी वी डोंट है दक्चर है दूसरा टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर इंटरप्रेनियर वो जो 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 टेक्नोलॉजी आपको चाहिए हाई वैल्यू ए पी आई बनाने के लिए वो यहाँ नहीं है एंड इंटरप्रेनियर फील के गवर्नमेंट सपोर्ट अगर करें चाइना और दूसरी जगह से हम टेक्नोलॉजी पे जाए तो ये हमें काफी हेल्पफुल हो सकती है और रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क वगैरह तो ये ये वो थीम्स हैं विच रिफ्लेक्ट द माइंड सेट ऑफ द स्टेक होल्डर्स हमने एक और स्टडी की कि अगर आप अट्रैक्ट इन्वेस्टर्स कि अगर इफ यू वांट टू इन्वेस्ट इन ए पी तो आपको कितना इन्वेस्टमेंट चाहिए होगा तो ये हमने कोटेशन वगैरह दे के अपने तौर पर किया एक मॉडल प्लांट के लिए आपको तकरीबन फोर मिलियन का तो कॉस्ट आएगी इसमें मशीनरी में और फोर्टी वन मिलियन की लैब में तो ये ये एक बेसिक पैरासीटामोल प्लांट क्या है डेट इज सब्जेक्ट टू वेरिएशन ऑफ कोर्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन कैपेसिटी क्वालिटी ऑफ इक्विपमेंट एंड दीज थिंग्स मगर इसमें मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में सबसे बड़ा इशू है प्लांट लगाने में डेट इज रेगुलेटरी इन्वायरमेंट इम्पैक्ट असमेंट क्योंकि आपको जब बेसिक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग का प्लांट लगाते हैं तो यू नीड ट्रीटमेंट प्लान दिस इज वेरी एक्सपेंसिव अगर एक कंपनी ने अपने पूरे लिए बन लगाना है तो उनको कॉस्ट इफेक्टिवनेस नहीं रहती तो इंडिया एंड बांग्लादेश में उन्होंने वाटर ट्रीटमेंट प्लान इन्वायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन ये उसके लिए एक पूरा पार्क बना दिए हैं जहाँ ये पार्क हैं वहाँ पे ये सारी फैसिलिटीज उन्होंने दे दी हैं तो वो जो विजुअल कंपनीज हैं वो शेयर प्रॉब्लम आते हैं अच्छा अब हमने फार्मास्यूटिकल uh, इंडस्ट्री का स्वाट किया कि व्हाट आर दी स्ट्रेंथ वेयर वी स्टैंड वेयर वी स्टैंड सो अब हमने हमारे पास जो अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं अभी ब्रांडेड मेडिसन ब्रांडेड टीआईज हैं और जो ऑफ पेटेंट होने जा रही हैं तो हम इन्हें बना सकते हैं चैलेंजेस हमने डिस्कस किए स्ट्रेंथ मैंने आपको बताई कि फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री बहुत वाइब्रेंट इंडस्ट्री है वी हैव गुड प्लांट्स और दूसरा हमने रिस्क ऑफ सप्लाई चेन ये सब हमने डिस्कस कर लिया नाउ कमिंग टू दी कमिंग टू दी हैव प्रोपोज अ मॉडल दैट कैन कुड बी फॉलोड इस मॉडल में ये इनेबलर्स हमने सब डिस्कस किए हैं कि टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर स्केल ऑफ आर एन डी ये अगर हम कर दें तो हम अपना जो एक्सपोर्ट और ये साथ कर सकते हैं लेकिन इसमें मीडिएटिंग इफेक्ट अगेन मीडिएटर्स हैं कि अगर हमें कॉस्ट रिड्यूस करनी पड़ेगी कैपेसिटी को स्केल अप करना पड़ेगा और क्वालिटी अप इसमें जो गवर्नमेंट का रोल है गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसीज ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस इंसेंटिव एंड सब्सिडीज अब इंसेंटिव एंड सब्सिडीज में भी एक बड़ा मसला ये आता है वेन यू गिव दिन सब्सिडी ऑन पीपल एंड यू हैव टू इंश्योर के वो मिस यूज नहीं हो रही है लोग अगर सब्सिडीज भी ले लेते हैं इंसेंटिव भी ले लेते हैं एंड देन दे डोंट give the desired results there should be incentives and subsidies but it must be uh, capped and subject to regulations and strict controls so if we come at here to ye teen hamare strategic goals hain where the country can uh, progress ek to promotion of locally manufactured api apne objective ko dusra hamara hai localization of pharmaceutical भी देखिए जो फार्मास्यूटिकल कंपनीज हैं वो फार्मुलेशन इंडस्ट्री है तो हमें उनको वी शुड इंगेज देम कि वो प्रैक्टिकल इंटीग्रेशन पे जाएं 
ताकि वो नीचे उसको ए पी आई मैनुफेक्चर में जाए जो ए पी आई मैनुफेक्चर है वो प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हैं इंटरमीडिएट यूज कर रहे हैं उनको इंकरेज किया जाए कि वो नीचे बेसिक मैनुफेक्चरिंग में जाए ताकि कंट्री को फायदा हो और दूसरा कंड्यूसिव इको सिस्टम एंड ईज ऑफ डूइंग स्ट्रेटेजिक ऑब्जेक्टिव फाइनली हमने जो रिकमेंडेशन की है पॉलिसी ए पी आई पॉलिसी जो ऑलरेडी बनी हुई है जिसमें सारे डिटेल दी हुई है उसका इम्प्लीमेंटेशन होना चाहिए अभी ट्वेंटी परसेंट से ज्यादा इम्प्लीमेंटेशन नहीं है इट शुड भी दूसरा ये है और क्वालिटी कम्प्लाइंस होना चाहिए और उसके लिए एक टास्क फोर्स बना दी जाए कि वो जो क्वालिटी स्टैंडर्ड्स हैं उनको देखें और थर्ड है रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट उसके बाद द लास्ट स्लाइड इज फ्यूचर रिसर्च नाउ आई स्ट्रांगली रिकमेंड कि अगर इस को हमें जाना है तो सबसे पहले हमें देखना है कि जो एफ डी अप्रूवल्स हैं क्वालिटी स्टैंडर्ड्स हैं वो क्या है रिक्वायरमेंट क्या है हमारी इंडस्ट्री कहाँ स्टैंड करती है गैप्स कहाँ हैं एंड वी हैव टू डेवलप अ स्ट्रेटेजी अ रोड मैप अ प्लान के इस गैप को किस तरह किया जाए उसमें गवर्नमेंट का क्या रोल होगा डैप का क्या रोल होगा इन गैप और दूसरा ये कि ए पी आई मैनुफैक्चरिंग आई सजेस्ट आई रिकमेंड के हमने जो इतना काम किया है एपीआई पर वी शुड है वेबसाइट दिस इंटरक्टिव डैशबोर्ड अवेलेबल फॉर द इन्वेस्टर रिसर्चर्स एंड अदर्स एंड हेल्प देम फैसिलिटेट देम इंटरेक्चुअली सीट एंड एंड अचीव दिस थैंक यू वेरी मच बहुत शुक्रिया थैंक यू वेरी मच काजी साहब फॉर अ वेरी इंसाइटफुल प्रेजेंटेशन नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इन्वाइट uh mir mohammad shah sahab from sakar iba university to present on uh, prioritizing strategic resources mental health and well being of healthcare professionals our research is prioritizing strategic resources for mental health of healthcare workers uh very beginning strategic resources are not just material resources but we talk about well being health um, as well as time which is critical for um, being a well my well being of life now the team is here professor meer mohammad shah myself sarwar azhar dr aina haq and we had consultant ali bin hazar uh, i'll go through the presentation on these six points the background research objectives ethical framework technology and finding and then recommendations uh we have been having a lot of total evidence of clash in healthcare workers doctors patients which is a regular problem however when we over talk to uh, the senior doctors I thought that this was just an aberration, but not a main problem. However, a general aggression model suggests that stress, frustration, normally leads to aggressive behavior. So there was this contradiction. On one side, there is aggression. The side uh, it is considered as not important. Happens. So he thought there is some issue. that is the gap which is in our understanding around the world stress has become one of the major concerns in the world does surpass the problems of cancer uh, obesity and therefore the funds are being directed towards understanding the markers of stress our concern was health workers we know that in the general population five individuals are considered to be affected by frustration stress anxiety um since we were looking at how do the and their patients having an impact on their um mental health so in that was these three objectives to understand if 
anxiety and stress is out of their life. Second, the sources and markers of this stress creating situation. Finally, propose and we have concentrated only in sin. And for that purpose, we have to select two patients. One, Karachi, Sakur, a flavor of a strong urban center as well as rural center to understand the patients. Okay. Uh, the underlying theories. Um, it is a theory uh, proposed by Sen, and there are a number of other supporters to it. And then we have Nosbaum, who has actually worked on this ability theory in the health sector. Resource, which basically means if you lose resources, your time is affected, you will become stressed and anxious. These combinations for, are being applied to understand um, what happens with the doctors and medical educators. Um, our research is purely exploratory. We had suggested it's nothing that we find our findings in a better way, but because of shortage of time, sources, we went for this qualitative approach. To stratified sampling to select uh, the interviewees, which covered aspect senior professors, house job, teachers, as well as medical staff. Um, and the hospitals had to be chosen in 19, which was basically minimal 200 beds, uh, OPD, ACU, CCUs. And um, so that we could get three logic coming into position where patients are referred to. Finally, we had uh, three phases of interviews, uh, starting with first exploratory and then going to these sessions. Uh, and the final interview was with medical students who are at the highest position in the living and we tried to get ideas. So then on the uh, strata included medical superintendents, senior professionals, physicians, junior physicians, house workers, and even lower staff and to the level of the house or the cleaning staff, guards which are operating in hospitals. Um, like I said, we selected hospitals from two, Rachi and Sakha, and we had to look at both hospitals, public and private. Um, we already had a feeling that private sector hospitals are not prone to these stressful conditions, and we will discuss why this is so. Now, we already suggested the key select hospitals and we had to interviews to cover till we reach saturation. Uh, final, like I have already told you, were from subtenants. And we had got interviews were covered. The second finding that we found was patient overload. Uh, I will give you total evidence. I have watched it happening that in OPDs, a doctor was entering to more than 150 patients. Internationally, standard is 60 per six hour period. That means 10 minutes for one patient. If we were seeing people going over 150, some cases even 200 people were being looked after by one GP, the practitioner. And that was creating a mess in the hospital system. 
the reason for this is particularly in sense policy any patient comes there is no fusel for reason the food shortages now again we have observed that on one bed we could find patients with two difficult different medical conditions one bed two medical conditions you can imagine the problem of treatment as well as transfer of sickness is going on locality patient behavior patient behavior but the attendance since there is no awareness for being a hospital in pakistan we find one patient being supported by seven to eight family members all come to the hospital and park themselves in the room so that unfortunately uh They want to relieve themselves or problem. People lose senses of the hospital, creating lot of stress. No staff work, which gets communicated over to the higher levels, and that creates a mess. Then um, primary and secondary health services have a lot of problems. They are staffed. They lack facilities for people to run. First, the system. And the two problems that we discovered, which is uh, external to the hospital system, is lack of training. And here I need to clarify: training is not a professional training. Where medical training is very good, they are constantly being trained in stress management, in coping with. patient behaviors and being able to communicate with patients properly you normally find in the international systems right patient and their people who go along with the patients how to take care of these things the final was of mentorship now obviously as told by the senior doctors there was a very strong connection between professors and doctors uh, they would regularly interact with the doctors they would allow them to communicate by being monitors there however because of changing conditions economic conditions more and more professors have put into uh, private practices so the time they used to give to the junior doctors in the wards has now grown and that has contributed majorly to the strong engagement between the doctors and professors this has created a cycle which then leads to miscommunication misbehaviors stress and so on uh, finally the recommendations that we have our suggestion in this is to reduce pressure on tertiary hospitals because tertiary hospitals receive patients from catchment areas which are located around the urban cities for example in rachi they come from ghatki they don't go to sakhar but they will travel all the way rachi to china hospital the trauma centers when they do just move there with no referral no method of scheduling of the central main hospitals so the first um a uh, uh, recommendation would be to initiate a general practitioner system which has been very successful in england Um, the one which has carried their health care all along uh, has to be integrated by the IT framework because referrals from the GP tertiary hospitals has to pass through per uh, IT or 
communication system. Um, secondly, also, the GP training has to provide a on a simple method. You have to be trained in terms of registrations, how to give pensions, what level of care they can provide, and so on and so forth. Now, in Karachi, for example, the hospitals are now located in the areas. There is no more capacity to do good. The amount that has to be shipped in the hospital, which are now located in Karachi, may be now shipped to primary and secondary care where there is multiple weakness in that system. And that is why patients or the patient's uh, dependents do not trust their system, primary or secondary. So the logic is to try and improve both systems other than continuous investment in structure, which is of no use because India is so congested uh, traveling to the urban center is becoming more difficult. Well, the third is there has to be public awareness campaign. Now, this was very significant uh, because language differences, uh, the knowledge, the background education. So, there was a proposition. Somebody said somebody could help us. We have signages, we have signs which explain to the patients where to go, what to do, how to get there. So they suggested that in AI, artificial intelligence back system, be available on mobile phones, which could help the patient in any language speaking place so that the system could inform them how to do what, when, and where. This was possible a solution that we use. Now, professional training. Already explained it's professional training. However, what I found that there was no regular no training whatsoever in terms of building soft skills, communication skills, for example. Uh, stress management, coping strategies, all these are key as you find similar systems all over the world. And the problem was wherever there was this training, the doctors had to pay for it. Now, no doctor wants to communications. So there it was big gap here. Finally, mentorship. Told you, uh, senior doctors were very closely related with junior doctors. But what we have found is that the senior doctors are now seeing so much that they are not giving time to um, the young doctors how to learn to cope with this. This is an issue that they cannot um, give any suggestion directly. But this lies directly with the culinary awards or benefits that the doctors get. It is one condition that we found that the doctors in general find that their uh, salaries or their uh, comic benefits are low. And that is why they are pushed to go and seek a private clinics where they are referred to, and so on and so forth. One point that I need to play in the private and the public sector, which was established that private sector may a problem they already are very well aware will be paying for everything. Whereas the public sector hospitals not charging anything, maybe a very nominal fee, but the problem is definitely with the public sector hospitals. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Saab, for the very insightful presentation. Now I would like to uh, invite 
Mr. Amir Raza Saab from University of Peshawar to present on the state of higher education in the wake of the 18th constitutional amendment. Ji, bismillah rahman rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, first of all, I am very thankful uh, to the Pai Rasta team and uh, to RAC to uh, provide researchers like myself this opportunity. Uh, Nadeem Saab uh, spoke about the state of uh, the study of economics in Pakistan. I'm a political scientist by trait, uh, by training. And uh, I, I'm sure he knows, and I'm sure many of you in the audience know, uh, that uh, the state of political science is not much different when it comes to uh, policy inputs or uh, tangible policy solutions, uh, honestly, uh, that we have to offer to the policymakers. Uh, I'm also thankful because uh, when you when you hear the pride, you obviously think of economics. Uh, but as you can see from the uh, panel that is sitting here, including myself, that uh, pride has encouraged uh, people that belong to different uh, academic areas. So this is, I think, Rasta is a more uh, multi multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary uh, network uh, that has been created, and uh, in this process. I think I've learned a lot more from some of these WhatsApp groups that, that Rasta has created than uh, honestly some of the professor professors group that I have at my own uh, university, uh, which is again an unfortunate thing to say. Mary uh, Apnijo research uh, coming to the, uh, coming to the today's presentation. Uh, this comes partly from my own frustration. Uh, obviously, I'm a professor at a public sector university in New York, Peru, I'm sure. आप लोग सुनते आ रहे होंगे कि जी यूनिवर्सिटीज के अंदर फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस है यूनिवर्सिटीज के पास पैसे नहीं है तनख्वाह नहीं दे सकते हैं वगैरह वगैरह सो एज समवन हु इज अफेक्टिव बोथ इन टर्म्स ऑफ समवन हु वर्क्स एट सच एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सेकंडली बिकॉज़ आई एम अ सिटीजन ऑफ दिस कंट्री एंड समवन हु सॉल्यूशंस एज नदीम साहब सेड इन द बिगिनिंग सॉल्यूशंस नीड टू फाउंड फॉर प्रॉब्लम्स तो इनिशियली जब मैंने इस पे काम शुरू किया तो मेरा ख्याल ये था जो असल प्रॉब्लम है वो ये है कि जी एटीन अमेंडमेंट हुई है और उसके बाद रिवोल्यूशन हुई है और प्रोविंशियल और फेडरल जो है दे आर अनएबल टू सॉर्ट द इशू और मेरा ख्याल ये था कि जो प्रोविंस हैं दे शुड बी एबल टू एलोकेट मोर मनी टू दी हायर एजुकेशन और इससे मसला हल हो जाएगा थ्रू माई ओन रिसर्च एंड थ्रू आर कंसल्टेशन एंड आर डायलॉग विद रास्ता टीम एंड आई स्पेसिफिकली जायद साहब हु इज सिटिंग हेयर इनके साथ बात करके वी जनरली कि जो प्रॉब्लम है दैट इज एट वेरियस लेवल्स इन द सिस्टम प्रॉब्लम एग्जिस्ट बोथ एट द पॉलिसी लेवल एट द पॉलिटिकल लेवल बट आल्सो देयर इज ए सिवियर गवर्नेंस प्रॉब्लम इन द यूनिवर्सिटीज एज वेल वो सारी चीजें जो हैं हमने कोशिश की कि इस रिसर्च के अंदर हम उसको ले करें अब ये वो चीजें हैं जिसके ऊपर हमारी फोकस रहा विच वॉज द फाइनेंशियल कंस्ट्रेंट्स आप जानते होंगे फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम दिस हैज बीन इन द मीडिया यूनिवर्सिटीज हैव बीन अनेबल टू पे सैलरीज यूनिवर्सिटीज इस्लामिक कॉलेज के बारे में कुछ ऐसा कहा गया था जी दी रजिस्ट्रार्स ऑफ टू गेट समथिंग फ्रॉम अस सो दैट वी आर एबल टू फॉर यू वेद एज यूनिवर्सिटी से एक हमारे दोस्त हैं लहान नियाज साहब उन्होंने उन्होंने एक चीज कही थी तो देर हैज बीन थिंक हैज बीन इन द इन द न्यूज की जी जो हायर एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन है Uh, they've been facing, like I said, uh, significant financial challenges. उसके साथ जो चीज हमारे जहन में आती थी वो ये थी कि जो एच ई सी के फंड हैं वो ड्राई अप हो रहे हैं तो उसकी वजह से और यूनिवर्सिटियां बढ़ रही हैं विच विच इज समथिंग जिस पर हम डिटेल में बात करूंगा वो जो ड्राई अप हो रहे हैं और यूनिवर्सिटियां बढ़ रही हैं तो जो पाए है वो सेम है जो उसके जो जो उस पाए जो जिनको की तादाद में इजाफा हो रहा है तो दैट वॉज समथिंग दैट वी लुक डेंट टू बट देन ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स एज आई सेट हमने जो एक और चीज के ऊपर फोकस किया वो ये भी था कि हाउ आर यूनिवर्सिटी ट्राइंग टू मीटिंग चैलेंजेस दैट दे फेस्ड इन प्रोसेस ऑफ लाइक आई सेट दिस फाइनेंशियल एंड गवर्नेंस क्राइसिस जो कि हमें नजर आ रहा है uh, ये भी तकरीबन वही चीज है अच्छा दीज आर सम ऑफ दी प्रायर स्टडीज जिन्होंने एटीन अमेंडमेंट और हायर एजुकेशन को टच किया था ज्यादा कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव नहीं किया था किसी ने कहा था कि जी जो प्रेमर के इसलिए नाकाम हो रहे हैं यूनिवर्सिटीज इसलिए स्ट्रगल कर रही है क्योंकि मॉनिटरिंग एवेल्युएशन नहीं है जो गिव दम फंड्स आपको रिटर्न नहीं मिलता है दूसरा लोग ये कहते थे कि जी जो हायर एजुकेशन स्पेशली इन सिंध जहाँ 
स्पेशल हायर एजुकेशन कमीशन उनके और फेडरल जो हायर एजुकेशन कमीशन है जो नेशनल हायर एजुकेशन कमीशन है उनके दरमियान टेंशन है कुछ लोग ये कहते थे कि जी देर आर ब्यूरोक्रेटिक हर्टल्स ये जो प्रोफेशनल जो क्रिसीज हैं उनकी कैपेसिटी नहीं है या उनकी विल नहीं है तो गांधी हायर एजुकेशन अच्छा मैं ब्रीफली थोड़ा सा ये हिस्ट्री के ऊपर अगेन सिंस जैसे मैंने थोड़ी देर पहले भी कहा कि आई एम पॉलिटिकल साइंटिस्ट तो मैं थोड़ा सा वो जो गवर्नेंस फ्रेमवर्क है उसको थोड़ा सा मैं स्पेसिफाई uh, करना चाह रहा था पाकिस्तान uh, बनने से पहले देर वर फ्यू यूनिवर्सिटीज इन इंडिया जिनके लिए उन्होंने इंटर यूनिवर्सिटीज बोर्ड पहले बनाया उसके बाद यूनिवर्सिटी ग्रांट्स कमीशन यानी ब्रिटिश इंडिया में बनाया गया uh, जब पार्टीशन हो गई उसके बाद इंडिया क्रिएटेड यूजीसी उन्होंने शुरू में बना लिया पाकिस्तान ने कोई पर्टिकुलर बॉडी नहीं बनाई उसकी वजह ये थी कि अंटिल नाइनटीन पाकिस्तान में टोटल चार यूनिवर्सिटीज थी अब उनके लिए जाहिर है कोई इतना बड़ा कैनिज्म जो था अगर दिस वॉज प्रपोज इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी नाइन की एक यू जी बना लें जो कि ओवरऑल नहीं बनाई गई अब इसके अलावा दिस दिस शुड बी कैप्टन माइंड की बिटवीन 1956 जो पहला कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन था नाइनटीन 1973 जब यानी वो हमारा करंट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बनता है इस दौरान में हर एजुकेशन रिमेन्ड ए प्रोविंशियल सब्जेक्ट अच्छा जब 1973 का कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आया विच सपोजिडली गेव मोर अटोनोमी टू द प्रोविंस तो बाकी चीजों से बरक्स जो हायर एजुकेशन है दिस वॉज गिवन टू दी फेडरल गवर्नमेंट और जब वो फेडरल गवर्नमेंट को कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर मिल गया तो उसके बाद कमीशन का एक्ट 1974 में इसके नीचे कमीशन हम आते हैं और इसके साथ साथ अगर आप में से कोई ये सेंटर ऑफ एक्सेलेंस वाले हैं तो उसका भी जो एक्ट था वो भी इसी दौरान में पास किया गया अच्छा इन 2002 ये करंट बॉडी बनती है जिसकी हम बात करते हैं विच इज दायर एजुकेशन कमीशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान जो कि आजकल एग्जिस्ट करती है हायर एजुकेशन कमीशन का आइडिया बुनियादी तौर पे साहब ने थोड़ी देर पहले कहा भी कि सम ऑफ दीज आइडियाज कम फ्रॉम आउटसाइड पाकिस्तान इन वी अडॉप्ट तो दैट आइडिया आल्सो केम फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड बैंक और जुबैदा जलाल साहब शी वॉज दूफ एजुकेशन एट दिन ही इन्वाइटेड ए हाई लेवल कमीशन हायर एजुकेशन पर उन्होंने आइडिया दिया कि जी देर शुड बी ए बॉडी फॉर हायर एजुकेशन पाकिस्तान जिसका काम सिर्फ यही ना हो कि वो ग्रांट्स दे यूनिवर्सिटीज को जो कि उसके साथ साथ एवेल्युएशन करे मॉनिटरिंग करे उसके अलावा एक्रेडिशन वगैरह के केसेस और स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन का ख्याल रखे अक्रॉस पाकिस्तान सो दिस वाज द आइडिया अंडर विच हायर एजुकेशन कमीशन वाज क्रिएटेड ऑन सितंबर 2002 अंडर ए प्रेजिडेंशियल ऑर्डिनेंस इसको इनिशियली बनाया गया with much more powers with uh, with with much greater responsibility uh, than than anything that we previously had yani you see acha dusri baat technically un logon ke liye jo jo main program rakhte hu ye jo higher education commission hai it was not placed under the ministry it was placed under the prime minister directly so ek ye bhi jo baad mein it would become a legal question jab hum aage ye 18th amendment ki taraf jayenge acha ji अब ये हुआ कि इन अमेंडमेंट वाज मेड टू टू कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान विद द आइडिया अमंग अदर थिंग्स टू प्रोवाइड मोर ऑटोनोमी टू द प्रोविंसेस के प्रोविंसेस को ज्यादा प्यार दिए जाएं उसमें से जो एजुकेशन है उसमें पाकिस्तान के कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में देर वर टू लिस्ट एट द टाइम एक फेडरल लिस्ट था एक कंकरेंट लिस्ट था कंकरेंट लिस्ट जिसमें से सूबे या फेडरल गवर्नमेंट जो है वो लेजिस्लेट कर सकते हैं कंकरेंट लिस्ट वॉज ऑल टूगेदर इज नॉट मैं इन दल लिस्ट इज नाउ इन दल्सो इंक्लूडेड दी हायर एजुकेशन एजुकेशन इन जनरल बट ऑल्सो हायर एजुकेशन तो यहां से ये सेंस मिला क्योंकि अब रेलिवेंस खत्म हो गई है क्योंकि इट इज अ फेडरल बॉडी सिंस हायर एजुकेशन इज बीन डिवॉल्व टू द प्रोविंस सो आई शुड देर बी एन एच सी एनी वोट जिसकी वजह से द गवर्नमेंट सेंट ए नोटिफिकेशन द फेडरल गवर्नमेंट सेंट ए नोटिफिकेशन टू दी एच ई सी सेंग दैट दी एच ई सी वुड बी एबॉलिश टू टू थाउजेंड एंड टेन आज भी हम सुन रहे हैं कि जी एच ई सीबॉलिश में ये बात होती है बाजू का बट नोटिफिकेशन वो सेंट इन टू थाउजेंड एंड टेन की जी हायर एजुकेशन कमीशन लेकर फ्यू इंडिविजुअल डॉक्टर अताउर रहमान सुप्रीम कोर्ट उन्होंने पिटिशन की जो लिस्ट है उसके अंदर ये लिखा हुआ है कि जो स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन है विद द फेडरल गवर्नमेंट ठीक है 
तो उन्होंने ये कहा कि स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन कौन करेगा वो एच करेगा और एच जो है वो तो पहले भी किसी मिनिस्ट्री के नीचे नहीं था अगर मिनिस्ट्री सेवनटीन डिवॉल्व हुई है तो उसके साथ एच का कोई ताल्लुक नहीं है इफ्तार चौधरी साहब वॉज दी ही वॉज दी चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ पाकिस्तान एट द टाइम उन्होंने डिसाइड किया कि अनलेस स्पेसिफिकली टू रिप्लेस एच ई सी एच ई सी एंटिटी इट शुड रिमेन रादर ए नेशनल एंटिटी ये वहीं पर रहेगी क्योंकि इसका रोल जो है वो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर आपने खत्म नहीं किया और ना ये उधर से जाता तो ये तो एक क्वेश्चन हो गया कि नाउ दिस कॉमन पीपल बिलीव के जी तो डिवॉल्व हो गया है और किसी चला जाए लोकली भी एक्ट पास किए बलूचिस्तान ने पास किया सिंध और और पंजाब ने पास किए तो एक्ट भी उन्होंने पास कर लिए लेकिन एच अपनी जगह पे वो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन क्रिएट की बिटवीन लाइक आई सेड द रियलिटी एंड द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ एक्ट अच्छा साथ में इशू ये आया कि अब इनकी फाइनेंसिंग कौन करेगा वुड प्रोवाइड द ग्रांट टू द यूनिवर्सिटीज एटीन अमेंडमेंट जब हुई तो उसके लिए एन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन कमीशन वॉज्यूटेड अंडर दी हेडशिप ऑफ सेनेटर रजा रबानी हु वॉज ऑल्सो दर्सन हुयर हेडेड दमेंडमेंट इट सेल्फ सो देर वॉज एन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन कमीशन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन कमीशन का काम यह था कि दे हैड टू लुक एट दी एटीन अमेंडमेंट एंड देड टू सी कि जी इसको कैसे अब प्रैक्टिकल बनाना है So one of the issues that came up was the higher education and higher education commission in 2011 acha aur iske liye jo body jo body hai jo in matters ko dekhti hai it is the council of common interest jo ki high powered body hai jisme prime minister hota hai aur jo chief ministers hote hain so in 2011 jo commission tha implementation commission it brought the matter of hcc to the council of common interest and it proposed until the time देर इज एन एट एन एफ सी अवार्ड क्योंकि जब एटीन अमेंडमेंट हो रही थी उससे पहले सेवन एन एफ सी अवार्ड हुआ था जिसमें आप लोग जानते होंगे तो ये कहा गया कि अंटिल द टाइम देर इज एन एट एन एफ सी अवार्ड हायर एजुकेशन की जो फाइनेंसिंग है इट रिमेन्स द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द फेडरल गवर्नमेंट दिस इज टू थाउजेंड इलेवन एंड अंडर Gilani sahab he was the prime minister at the time Yusuf Raza Gilani sahab the federal government agreed that they would continue to finance higher education until the time an 8th nfc award now pakistan still does not have an 8th nfc award abhi tak nahi hua which constitutionally should have been done almost a decade ago it should have been done but we do not have an nfc award i spoke with senator of rasia khantek sahab his view was that the reason that the that there are people who do not want an 8th nfc award to be concluded because it could because the last nfc had decided that the provinces share can only be enhanced it cannot be reduced so the only way an, an 8th nfc can go is to increase the share of the provinces which i think the federal government already struggling uh, would be an issue khair bar i just wanted to 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 kind of give you the background of where the challenges come from when i spoke with different individual both in the universities and outside usme se ek cheez jo bar bar aati thi wo ye thi ki to hcc ki responsibility hai when i spoke with hcc hcc ne ye kaha ki abul pakhtun khwame for example there are 20 universities that have been created after 2010 so if the provincial government is creating universities why is why is it not taking responsibility for financing the university the general question provincial governments ye kehti hain ki jab hum universities banate hain to hcc unko ek tradition deti hai unko monitoring evaluation karti hai sare mamlaat karti hai if they believe that financing is a problem why do they not stop us when we are creating these universities to yahan pe hum kade hain ki provincial governments can create universities but they would not wish to provide funds to them HEC has funds which are increasingly as we, I would go वो उसको मजीद फंड जो है वो उनके पास नहीं है तो वो दे नहीं सकते हैं so they, that is where I think part of the problem at least they, that is where it lies ये वो chart है जिसमें आपको नजर आता है the growth of universities the exponential growth of universities rather in Pakistan as I said that the time of independence Pakistan had a single university by 1960 we had four universities by 2002 jab hcc bana to pakistan had 59 universities out of which i believe 37 were 
पब्लिक सेक्टर यूनिवर्सिटीज ठीक है बाई टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री वेन आई रिसीव दिस डेटा जब वो एच ई सी की वेबसाइट से लिया पाकिस्तान हैज टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी वन यूनिवर्सिटीज सो एंड एंड देन यू कैन ऑल्सो सी दैट स्पेशली आफ्टर टू थाउजेंड एंड टेन उसमें एक्सपोनशियल मजीद उसके अंदर बहुत ज्यादा इंक्रीज हुआ है इन दी नंबर ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटीज दैट है पाकिस्तान सो यू कैन सी दी एक्सपेंशन ऑफ हायर एजुकेशन सेक्टर इन पाकिस्तान डूरिंग दिस टाइम अब वेन वी सी एंड आई एम श्योर मेनी ऑफ यू और अदर मोस्ट ऑफ यू कम फ्रॉम एकेडीमिया एंड यूव बिन इन यूनिवर्सिटीज लॉन्ग एनफ फॉर यू टू नो बट दी ग्रोथ इन टर्म्स ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटीज हैज नॉट ओनली हैपन्ड इन दी नंबर ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटीज नंबर ऑफ प्रोग्राम विद यूनिवर्सिटीज है उसके अंदर भी बहुत ज्यादा इजाफा हुआ है without any care for sustainability now for example in my own university in university of peshawar we have a regional studies department that was created 5 6 years ago now it is being abolished right now as we speak uh we we have criminology department to which students do not get enrollment so you would see that the expansion is not only taking place in terms of the number of universities but also in terms of the the number of programs and the faculty and the employees that in universities to aapko har tarah se so i i wouldn't like i said this this is the of growth that we are seeing uh, in in the sector F- funding kahan se aati hai for uh, for universities uh, for funding jo hai that primarily is from the federal government 2010 se pehle to federal government almost exclusively provided funding to the universities after after 2010 after 2010 Sindh has started to allocate, especially in the recent years, it has started to allocate more finances to the universities. But in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan, they have, as I have said, not provided any HCs, and their funding allocation is not there. Now, when we talk funding, you will see that the government usually says that we are increasing funds to the higher education. Now, in this lower graph, you can see there are three graphs within the. lines within the the lower lower chart usme se jo upar wala hai that is the accumulative ye sara jo higher education ke paas ja raha hai jo niche wala hai ye developmental grants hain aur jo beech mein hai ye recurring hai now recurring is where universities pay their salaries or pensions or their day to day expenses wahan se wo recurring se jo aapko hota hai jo industries ko fixed amount hoti hai wo since 2000 and 17 18 19 wo bilkul हम इससे ज्यादा रिकरिंग ग्रांट में नहीं दे सकते अच्छा अब लेकिन जब आप ओवरऑल सुनते हैं तो मिनिस्टर ऑफ फाइनेंस की तो आपको नजर ये आता है कि वो कह रहे हैं कि हमने तो हायर एजुकेशन के पैसे बढ़ाए हैं वो बढ़ाए कैसे होते हैं ये जो आपको नजर आ रहा है कि जी डेवलपमेंटल डेवलपमेंटल में क्या होता है ये पिछले से पिछले साल लैपटॉप स्कीम लेकर लेकर आए दस अरब रुपए की तो दैट वाज इंक्लूडेड इन दी यूनिवर्सिटीज ग्रांट और कहा गया कि हायर एजुकेशन को हम पैसे दे रहे हैं व्हेन इट वाज एज आई एम श्योर यू वुड अंडरस्टैंड ए मोर पोलिटिकली मोटिवेटेड आइडिया रादर देन समथिंग व्हिच एक्चुअली कंट्रीब्यूटेड टुवर्ड्स हायर एजुकेशन इन दैट सेंस एंड देन न्यू न्यू इंस्टीट्यूशंस आर क्रिएट ऑन दिस डेवलपमेंटल फंड दैट ऐड्स टू द रिकरिंग फंड व्हिच इज फ्लैट ऑन द अदर साइड so this is where like i said the funding from from that side becomes a problem a uh, provincial government as i said uh, unki taraf se there was minimal contribution um, or uh, universities ke jo own resources hain it varies some universities obviously have greater students body they have more resources they have been able to some new universities struggling uh, with with their resources acha uh, ye baral uh, acha ab universities jo hain they are trying to mitigate With these, with with this, uh, with this crisis themselves, उन्होंने क्या किया है कि जी हम enrollment बढ़ाएं अब enrollment का problem ये है कि for example in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa you have BS programs in colleges and you have BS programs in universities जो colleges degree दे रहे हैं वो वही है जो university दे रही है यानी if you are getting BS degree from a if an affiliated college it would say University of Peshawar University of Peshawar charges thousand rupees per semester college is free it is giving the same degree so if you try to increase enrollment the problem is why would a student come to you if if getting the same degree for almost free right so many programs are finding it difficult to get any enrollment because they have to compete with the colleges something that that i later wanted to mention as well 
दूसरा कमर्शलाइजेशन एफर्ट्स हैं वन रिकमेंडेशन इज टू क्लैरिफाई रोल्स एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज बोथ फॉर द फेडरल गवर्नमेंट एज वेल एज फॉर द प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट्स एज वेल एज फॉर द यूनिवर्सिटीज एज टू who has to provide finances who have to take care of themselves what is done to which universities have to do themselves all of that um eighth and fc concluded not only because of the universities but because it's a constitutional requirement we are almost 10 years late on that uh, there should be a moratorium on the establishment of new universities uh, new universities should not be established until the time a a specific sustainability plan for universities or for a specific university uh, low enrollment programs in universities they should be consolidated there should be a specific plan for them merge them with other universities or programs abolish programs if they're not working uh, pension liabilities this was something that i wanted to talk about maybe i'll talk about it in the question and answer uh, that is something that should be taken care of and that there should be an, a review of the hcc there should be an audit of the hcc and everything that it has done so far thank you very much uh, bismillah rahman rahim Uh, first of all i would like to congratulate uh, paid for continuing with their tradition of promoting research conducting and promoting research uh, it has been a real honor and privilege to be part of the research advisory committee as well as the uh, review of research being conducted under the umbrella of uh, rasta uh thank you all of you for such uh, wonderful presentations i would like to share my comments briefly on each uh, of the presentation and then at the end i would like to share some uh, overall feedback and insights to begin with i think uh, all the three presentations uh, touched upon some very important aspects uh in the health and education sector uh kazi afaq saab's presentation was very uh promising and it gave us particularly in these turbulent times when we are facing severe fiscal crisis uh some of the findings of the presentation were really optimistic and if <clears throat> sorry if pakistan is able to tap and harness the opportunity in the pharmaceutical industry uh, i think it's a great uh, it's a wonderful opportunity and it will also uh, contribute towards reducing the fiscal crisis that we are facing in particular the current account uh, deficit right now we are dependent on imports and uh, at the planning commission we have held several round table consultative workshops with relevant stakeholders including the private sector and the industry to explore ideas on how to encourage the domestic production of some of these products and i was uh, not surprised to see that many of the findings that we had uh, many of the issues that we had discussed during those consultative workshops uh, and made it to the presentation the research conducted by Azhi Afaq Saab and his team the presentation all touched upon some real really important issues uh from potential to from import substitution potential to the misuse of licenses uh and this is not only restricted to this sector and industry but it's a generic problem across pakistan where we have made uh, where licenses have become a tool of rent seeking in this country uh so the monitoring framework to to monitor and regulate the utilization the use or misuse of licenses interesting points about existence of domestic capacity but uh, that capacity is under utilized because our own private sector doesn't trust it uh, for issues of quality uh, reliability and uh, costing as well so for me as a as member social sector at the planning commission uh, these are findings that resonate with us and uh, i was also pleasantly surprised 
uh, to see the remarkable success of Bangladesh. Uh, they they reduced their imports from 97% uh, to 30% within a span of six years. Uh, and there were some good insights on what did Bangladesh do to achieve this success. So on this front, I, I think there are some important insights uh, in this presentation. I would also like to share my feedback on this and uh, the remaining two presentations as well. As uh, you would probably noticed, nearly all of them are exploratory research studies. And exploratory research studies are by design, men, by design, they have inherent limitations. They provide a basic analysis of what is going on in a particular industry or a sector. So given the overall, the stated design and objectives, the research has done a good job uh, in terms of answering the research questions. However, I would also like to highlight that. And this probably reflects my own bias as a student of political economy, uh, that it is time that we move from exploratory research to more applied research particularly for the research to have relevance for policy or industry. Uh, and I'm saying this because some of you sitting, uh, you might also have noticed that most of these issues, we already know about them in one or the other way. The real challenge is that government does have a policy a program or a project for each of the recommendations that have been presented in all of these three presentations. So the primary challenge in our development in public service delivery is not the lack of technically sound policies. We do have good policies and rules and all of these recommendations, you study any of our plans, Policies, even from two, three decades ago, you'll find the same recommendations. The real challenge is the limitations of the government to implement some of these recommendations and the failures of whatever policies are being implemented or initiatives are being implemented. And this has been widely recognized now in political economy literature, where Prominent and renowned political economists have referred to the capability trap. Dr. Nadeem Ulak's favorite Land Pritchett also has written about it and uh, many others where they say that one of the biggest challenges that developing countries face is not the lack of technically sound policies. It's almost always an implementation problem. And implementation problems, implementation failures the primary focus of our public policy research. So it's one thing to highlight needs to be done, ideally speaking, but it's another thing to analyze why what is being done is not working, why the existing public money that is spent on education, that is spent on health, that is spent on higher education is not delivering the desired results. Why efforts being made in the name of regulatory reforms, in the name of ease of doing business, why are they not yielding the design results? So those are some of the more applied questions that we need to probe in order for our research to inform future policy. Uh, the presentation on mental health and well-being, I think, again, it it was a very important aspect. Uh, mental health is, become a, is becoming a major challenge, but it's not acknowledged. It's under-acknowledged. So I fully endorse the significance of this issue. Uh, again, as most of you might have felt, the findings are not surprising. I mean, these are the issues we face in every public sector uh, hospital and in every public sector organization. They are poorly structured, resources are, resource availability issues are there. What 
for me was very insightful and i can relate to it because my wife is a doctor she works in a public sector hospital uh it also highlights the constraints that front line service providers face in these public sector organizations be they teachers be they doctors and it's very easy for those of us who are outsiders these systems to criticize the front line service providers without understanding the uh, inherent cities involved public service delivery so for example in this case this research has rightly highlighted the issues that your front line health workers face in public hospitals at the hand of patients as well as their attendants and that's because the poorest segment of your society goes to these hospitals middle class upper middle class they have opted out of public schools public health they go to private hospitals the poorest segment of the society goes to these hospitals and uh, the front line workers have to manage and face them as if they are responsible for everything in the entire health delivery chain so these are some of the issues that the research has uh, rightly pointed out uh, and understandably they would add the mental health stress the working conditions in particular for female doctors they are very uh, unsupportive in terms of the uh, my feedback i think first i would not repeat it but it's again another exploratory research most of these issues we already know this research this research has done a good job at uh, pointing out those issues at highlighting those issues in a more scientific manner uh in terms of the methodology i think uh it would have been fruitful if there was more information on how the private sector hospitals were chosen uh, because there is significant diversity within private sector as well uh and the findings might be different if uh we choose a low cost private sector hospital over some of these big uh, large corporate private sector hospitals last presentation was on the state of higher education in pakistan it's again something we have discussed in detail at the planning commission as well and the issues that have been highlighted are spot on so primarily in the wake of the 18th amendment key takeaways from this presentation were the provincial government are reluctant to take ownership of the universities although they have implemented uh, model university acts they are very interested in the extent of appointment of vice chancellors pro vice chancellors but when it comes to financing these universities there is a reluctance in the provincial government except uh, for the province of sindh which has done a good job at providing public financing to these universities the federal government appears to be interested in retaining some of the pre 18th amendment rules but without having the money packet uh particularly now that some of these pieces the federal government is revisiting its policy of financing higher education universities on their part have not helped the situation either unfortunately this i'm saying as member science technology and as as a member of the senate of couple of universities so bad governance within the university uh, has also contributed to it where we have uh, over hiring uh, and i wouldn't go into the detail but that has over the years contributed to the fiscal crisis that some of these universities are facing In my own uh, humble opinion i think the roles and responsibilities are very clear when it comes to the constitution it is the responsibility of the provincial governments to manage their universities the federal government or the hec is only responsible for standard setting and quality assurance unfortunately 
both HEC and federal government also want to retain some of the role that they shouldn't have. Provincial governments are interested to the extent of appointment. So I think the rules are very clear when it comes to the constitution. I don't see any confusion there. Uh, government as a country, uh, we have to implement it and agree on what is the way forward. I would also like to highlight, I mean, I supervise a budget. The, the cumulative development portfolio of HEC is more than 350 billion rupees that I currently supervise. Another harm that we have done to higher education is, and this is a major structural issue in Pakistan's governance, you will see it in many other sectors as well, is eliminating the distinction between regulation and enforcement. So regulators are not supposed to be in the business of implementation. HEC was supposed to regulate higher education. However, over the years, as government, we have engaged HEC in implementation and financing, which has happened at the cost of HEC playing its role of regulator. It's a conflict of interest issue. And no wonder, while we have made significant progress in expanding access to higher education, we are facing major challenge when it comes to the quality of higher education. And one reason why we have poor quality is because HEC has almost given up on its role of quality assurance uh, and monitoring. The time, resources, attention that should have gone to quality assurance, enforcement of standards has basically gone to enforcement of projects and financing issues. We see the same in skill sector where NAVTEC, which was supposed to be a regulator, is spending more time, resource, and policy attention on implementing projects. So this is a structural problem. We need to de-link implementation uh, from regulation. Those entities that are supposed to regulate should never be involved in the business of regulation because money will run after money, and money will always crowd out other functions, mundane functions, not so fancy functions such as quality assurance and monitoring. These I would like to conclude and uh, my single biggest feedback on some of these great presentations is that while they have done a tremendous job at highlighting the basic issues in these sectors, I would like to uh, conclude with this argument that we need to shift from exploratory research to more applied research to understand what are the drivers of implementation failures. Why do some of the best policies fail? Why does public spending on health, education, higher education does not lead to the desired results that we uh, intend for them at the beginning? Uh, thank you very much. questions. Brief a question, Pujiye. Assalamu alaikum, Ji. This is Dr. Naseem Khan Mahsood. I'm from Allama Iqbal Open University. I have just like two of the practical suggestions for two of the presenters. Uh, Professor Reza from Peshawar University. You talked about uh, the financing of the universities. If we don't go into this, who is not the responsibility, who is not the responsibility, but nowadays we are living in a digitized era. So digitalization era may hum bahut kuch aisa kar sakte hain ki jisse hum apne finances khud bhi reduce kar sakte hain rather than if we are looking towards any other institution. Bahut saare hamari university level ke upar at least BS level tak ke aise bahut saare degree programs hain ki jisme aapko koi labs aur us tarah ki requirement nahi hai. So agar hum digital uske upar chale jaayein ya agar जैसे हमारा यूनिवर्सिटी करती है अगर आप ओडियल सिस्टम को अडॉप्ट कर लें पाकिस्तान की बाकी यूनिवर्सिटीज भी तो हम अपने आउटरीच को बहुत ज्यादा बढ़ा सकते हैं एक चीज दूसरा पाकिस्तान जैसा मुल्क कि जिसमें आपका लिटरेसी रेट कहीं पर 56% में फॉल कर रहा है तो उसमें अभी हम शायद उस तरह की ये लग्जरीज नहीं अफोर्ड कर सकते जिसके लिए कोई बहुत ज्यादा हेवी फाइनेंसेस रिक्वायर्ड हो सो इट इज जस्ट अ प्रैक्टिकल सजेशन 
کہ اگر ہم ڈیجیٹل ایرا کا فائدہ اٹھا سکیں تو یہ بہت اچھا ہو جائے گا ہم اپنے بہت فار فلنگ ایریاز تک ایجوکیشن کو لے جا سکتے ہیں آئی ہیو اندر پلیز کیپ اٹ بریف کیونکہ ٹائم کم ہے ہم نے شارٹ سجیشن ٹو دا پروفیسر سرور یو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا مینٹل ہیلتھ بہت امپورٹنٹ ایشو ہے بٹ اسٹل سر ان دا ویسٹ اور اسپیسیفکلی اگر میں ویلفیئر اسٹیٹس کی بھی بات کروں تو وہ وہاں پر بھی اپنے جو ہیلتھ کیئر پروفیشنلز ہیں وہاں پر بھی وہ ان کو نہیں کر رہے ہیں اکاموڈیٹ اسپیسیفکلی ود ریفرنس ٹو دا مینٹل ہیلتھ اگر ان کو کوئی ایشوز ہوتے ہیں تو آپ نے پریزنٹیشن میں مجھے کہیں لیکنگ لگا کہ اگر کوئی بھی آپ کا ہیلتھ کیئر پروفیشنل برن آؤٹ ہوتا ہے اس کے لیے کیا کوئی بریک یا کچھ بھی ایسا ہے سسٹم کہ جس سے وہ تھوڑا سا ریفریش ہو کے دوبارہ اپنی ان سروسز کو اسی طرح سے اچھے طریقے سے پرفارم کر پائے تھینک یو جی بہت شکریہ ہم دو اور کوشچنز لیتے ہیں اور پھر ایک ساتھ آپ جوابات دیجیے گا جی ویری کوئی کوشچنز کہ یہ اے پی آئی کی اسٹڈی میں آپ نے بتایا کہ دس کروڑ کا پلانٹ لگ جاتا ہے پھر مجھے سمجھ نہیں آ رہی کہ اتنا سستا پلانٹ ہے کہ تو میں بھی لگانے کو تیار ہوں پوائنٹ یہ ہے کہ یہ پروفیٹیبلٹی اس کی کوئی ہے کہ نہیں ہے دوسری چیز اس پلانٹ میں لگانے میں مسئلہ کیا ہے میں تو سوچتا تھا اے پی آئی بڑی کمپلیکیٹڈ چیز ہے اسی لیے ہم باہر سے امپورٹ کرتے ہیں تو دیٹس اے بگ پرابلم وائی ڈونٹ وی ہیو اے بگ اے پی آئی انڈسٹری کا دس کروڑ کا پلانٹ ہے اسلام آباد میں تو ایک پلاٹ نہیں ملتا بیس کروڑ سے کم اچھا آگے چلیں دوسرے جو ہے اپنا مینٹل ہیلتھ ویسے مینٹل ہیلتھ پہ ایک چیز ڈسٹنگوش کرنی چاہیے یہ تو کنٹری ہے ہی مینٹل ہیلتھ کا پرابلم پوری کنٹری میں مینٹل ہیلتھ ہے اس سے ڈسٹنگوش تو کریں نا پہلے ہماری تو کنٹری میں مینٹل ہیلتھ سب مجھے سمجھ نہیں آتی آل دا وے فرام دا ٹاپ ٹو ڈاؤن ایوری بڈی از پاگل تو اس کو پہلے ڈسٹنگوش کر لیں تھوڑا سا ٹھیک ہے اور اسٹریس میں ہم رہتے ہی ہمارا اسٹریس ہی ہے جدھر سے نکلوں گا ابھی سڑکیں بند ہو گئیں سڑکیں ادھر سے چاہوں گا ادھر بند ہو گئیں یہ ہو گیا وغیرہ وغیرہ اچھا جی تھرڈ جو ایچ ای سی والا ہے ایچ ای سی پہ مجھے نہیں بالکل سمجھ آ رہی شڈ دی ایچ ای سی ایون ایگزٹ ڈو نیڈ این ایچ ای سی از دس انادر ایگزامپل آف دا ورلڈ بینک میکنگ اس ڈو سلی تھنگس کیونکہ ایچ ای سی کا مجھے مقصد نہیں سمجھ آتا کیا ڈگری اٹیسٹیشن کرنا ان کا کام ہے ڈگری اٹیسٹ کرنے کا جو اتنے لوگوں کو تنگ کرتے ہیں پیسے لیتے ہیں کیا تم شیم یہ تو ہر ریگولیٹری باڈی کہتی ہے مجھے پیسہ دے دو کسی طریقے سے دوسری ایچ ای سی کیا رول پلے کرتی ہے ان ٹرمز آپ نے یونیورسٹی تو بتائی آپ نے پائٹ کی اسٹڈی دیکھی جو ہم نے دیکھی ہے کہ دیز آر پروفیسر لیس یونیورسٹیز تو دنیا سے ہم کمپیٹن سے کریں گے اور ان یونیورسٹی کے ساتھ ایک اور چیز ہے کہ یونیورسٹیاں پالیٹیشن بناتے ہیں بالکل ٹیوشن سینٹر اور کوئی ضرورت نہیں ہے ریسرچ پہ ہم نے کام کیا ہے یونیورسٹی میں ریسرچ یوز لیس ہے تو اس کو بھی تو فیکٹر ان کریں نا تو یونیورسٹیز کا اگر ہم کاسٹ بینیفٹ نکالے جسٹ لائک ہم کاسٹ بینیفٹ اے پی آئی کا نکالے تو مجھے لگتا ہے کاسٹ بینیفٹ ہمارا تو زیرو ہی نیگیٹو ہی آئے گا سوری تھینک یو ڈاکٹر صاحب ایک آخری سوال لیں گے اگر آپ میں سے کسی کا کوئی سوال ہے السلام علیکم میرا نام ندیم ہے پائٹ سے میرا تعلق ہے میرا سوال بڑا سمپل سے سر آپ سے اسپیشلی جو آپ کی اسٹڈی تھی ایچ ای سی کے بارے میں کہ جو ایچ ای جتنی بھی نئی یونیورسٹیز بن رہی ہیں جیسے آپ نے جو ڈاٹا دیا ہے ٹو سکسٹی ون یونیورسٹیز کا اب شاید یہ ون ایٹی کراس کر گیا ہے اور اسی طرح ایئرلی ہم ٹوینٹی فور ٹوینٹی فائیو چارٹر اپروو کر دیتے ہیں پارلیمنٹ سے میرا کوشچن بڑا سمپل سا ہے کہ کیا کوئی ایچ ای سی کے پاس ایسا کرائیٹیریا جیسے جب کبھی ہم پڑھتے تھے تو یہ ہوتا تھا کہ ہر یونیورسٹی کی ایک جورسڈکشن ہوتی تھی اگر اس ایریا میں کوئی نئی یونیورسٹی بنانی ہوتی تھی تو ہمیں اس یونیورسٹی سے پرمیشن لینی پڑتی تھی کہ کیا وہ یہ نیٹ کیٹر فور کر لیتے ہیں یونیورسٹی کی ضرورت ہے میں اسلام آباد کی ایگزامپل دے دیتا ہوں یہاں پاس ہی ایک روڈ کے اوپر تین یونیورسٹیز ایک سنگل روڈ کے اوپر تین یونیورسٹیز ہیں کیا کوئی ایسا کوئی وہ ہے ایچ ای سی کی پالیسیز میں کچھ اس میں بہت شکریہ میرے خیال سے فہیم صاحب کنکلوڈ کرتے ہیں میں ہمارے معزز پینلسٹ کو انوائٹ کروں گا کہ وہ کوکلی ان سوالوں کے جواب دے دے جو آپ سے ریلیونٹ تھے پاکستان میں اسٹریس از کنسیڈرڈ ایز اے very negative thing it's down upon and people hide it but you can so anxiety or frustration or logos pe jadu problem dal dete hain still we do not bring it out yes in the western world there is stress but those markers are different in, in pakistan those markers and markers that we have are distinctive according to welcome Each marker needs a specific intervention. In Pakistan, the intervention is very 
जो बाहर है वो अलग है वहां प्रॉब्लम ये है कि वी डू नॉट इवन अप्रोच टू कोपिंग स्ट्रेटीज बिल्कुल छोड़े जो मेडिकल प्रोफेशन है वहां नहीं है फाइनली ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू की रिपोर्ट में फाइव हंड्रेड साइकेट्रिस्ट फॉर पॉपुलेशन ट्वेंटी टू यू कैन सी डिफरेंस एंड हाउ कैन यूट एरिया इन इंटरव्यू जी पी सिस्टम इज वन पॉसिबल जी डॉक्टर साहब आपने सही पॉइंट ऑफ किया कि दस करोड़ में अगर फैक्ट्री लग जाए लेकिन आई एग्री के लेकिन आप ये देखें हमने किसी भी इंडस्ट्री की फिजिबिलिटी बनाना दिस बहुत बड़ा काम है और दूसरा बहुत सारी कॉस्ट ऐसी होती हैं कि जो सब्जेक्ट टू लोकेशन है अब इसमें लैंड कॉस्ट नहीं है इलेक्ट्रिक कॉस्ट नहीं है इन्वायरमेंट की कॉस्ट नहीं तो हमने बस ये एक छोटी सी ये कोशिश की अगर एक बेसिक हमें आइडिया हो कि हाउ एक्सपेंसिव इट वुड बी हमने ये कोशिश की कि एक बेसिक अगर आपने पैरासिटामोल सच एस बनाना है प्लांट तो उसकी बेसिक रिक्वायरमेंट क्या होंगी एक्सक्लूडिंग ऑल द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कॉस्ट अब दुनिया में ये होता है कि लोग एपीआई इंडस्ट्री को प्रमोट करना चाहते हैं चाइना में इवन इंडिया में तो वो फ्री लाइन दे देते हैं लो कॉस्ट लाइन दे देते हैं यूटिलिटीज दे देते हैं इन जैसे मैंने कहा कि इन्वायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन की बहुत बड़ी कॉस्ट है मेजर कॉस्ट है जो लोग बियर नहीं कर पाते इंडस्ट्री तो वो फिर ए पी बना देते हैं शेयर कॉस्ट हो जाती है तो वो सब्जेक्टिव कॉस्ट है किस तरह की टेक्नोलॉजी ले रहे हैं कहा से सोर्स कर रहे हैं विल ऑब्वियसली इंपैक्ट एंड द कॉस्ट वुड गो फार मोर देन व्हाट्स मेंशन हियर बट इट ओनली कवर्स अ मॉडल इक्विपमेंट एंड क्वालिटी टेस्टिंग कॉस्ट सो थैंक यू प्रॉब्लम इज नॉट कॉस्ट और द रिसोर्स रिक्वायर्ड टू स्टैब्लिश वन यू नीड ऑफ पीपल टू वर्क इन दोस फैक्ट्रीज Why are we so worried about quality? Because our people are not trained or skilled in doing those things. So we lack trust. That's the major problem that we do not put up bigger factories. Ji, ha. Ek to apni baat ki ji. Why shouldn't we go more for digitization? Uh, I think part of the problem is that we have established universities in places where you cannot run a primary school. Um, I went to Pishin. Uh, you know, of so the University of Balochistan, they did not have electricity for the whole for the whole day for us to run a simple seminar. Um, so Zahir, we I went to Bunir. Uh, they so, so, so I would just say, okay, but digitization, you know, you can talk about it in Islamabad, maybe in Peshawar also, but then you 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 think of the other realities as well. So that so that and, and that brings me to what Nidhi uh, Mulak Sahab was saying. Ah, uh, that one, uh, and I think this also goes to the last question. ki ji uh, universities are established by politicians for political reasons which which are expedient at that time uh, sawabi has three universities where i would say and then mardan has two universities and they are very adjacent to each other uh, they sh- they shouldn't have been universities no one asks universities anymore if they was before you know no one asks universities anymore whether they would allow for other universities to exist the problem right now is that you cannot even affiliate a college with yourself if it is outside of your juris- jurisdiction uh, even if it is in your jurisdiction but it's a women college to the university so it's like i said it's or the short term political experience that these institutions are created without a long term thought so that's why like i said it would be an infrastructural nightmare for many, many universities if we go for complete digitalization maybe this something that we can talk about it here in uh, in south नदीम साहब ऑल्सो पॉइंटेड आउट कि जी एच एस सी का रोल क्या होना चाहिए उसका रोल ज्यादा से ज्यादा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल है वो ज्यादा से ज्यादा ये स्टैंडर्ड सेटिंग का और उसके अलावा अगर कुछ को उसको कुछ देना चाहते हैं तो वो इंटर प्रोवेंशियल कोऑर्डिनेशन का हो सकता है विच कुड बी अ वेरी स्मॉल सेटअप वेरी स्मॉल स्ट्रक्चर दैट कैन रन दैट तो हाँ तो भी उस बारे में बात की प्लीज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन लीगली इट शुड नॉट बी एन इशू इन वो जी बहुत शुक्रिया आप तीनों का मैं एक आखिरी फूड फॉर थॉट के साथ कंक्लूड करूंगा 
اگر سیاسی مقاصد کے لیے پروجیکٹس بنائے جاتے ہیں تو اس سے بڑا سوال یہ ہے کہ اس کا مطلب ہے کہ پولیٹیشنس فیس این انسینٹیو دیر از اے ریٹرن آن دیٹ انویسٹمنٹ جب تک لارج انفراسٹرکچر پروجیکٹس پہ انسینٹیو ہے پولیٹیشنس کو اور وہ انسینٹیو یہ ہے کہ اگر میں اور آپ اور پبلک اپنا ووٹ بھی اسی بنیاد پہ دیتے ہیں ہم اچھے اور برے پرفارمر کی تمیز بھی اسی بنیاد پہ کرتے ہیں سو از اٹ ریئلی فیئر ٹو بلیم دا پولیٹیشنس فار میکنگ دیز بگ انفراسٹرکچر پروجیکٹ بہت شکریہ آپ سب کا تھینک یو ویری مچ فار یور پیشنس یور پیزنس 